This video is brought to you by UEI Test Instruments. Essential Instruments, Outstanding Service. All right, guys, we're here uh, waiting on the owner to come open up this gate right here. Uh, we are at a gun shop. They make custom guns and even uh, even for the military. And we are here to change out a train evaporator coil in an air handler that's in a big, uh, that's in a big mechanical closet. Uh, should be a real simple change out. The train system is in fantastic condition. So we're just going to slide the old evaporator out and slide the new one in and we'll see if we can get you guys some footage on this.
scared the shit out of me, bro. I was <laughs> that's like, a good thing. What did I do? When they got pressure in them like okay. that, that's a good thing. <laughs> that means it ain't leaking. I was like, oh god. <laughs> Sean's about to eat my asshole. All right, <clears throat> the customer was here, but you saw me remove the TXV off the old coil because this coil came with everything except a TXV. Uh, I, I was surprised it came with a horizontal tray and everything, but we're going to take the horizontal tray off because we're in an upflow application. We don't need it. And all trains send you is this little nub piece, so we're going to reuse the TXV. You can see somebody's made a repair here. Looks like maybe the tube rubbed at one time or something, which is fine. The TXV works perfect. It's just you can see the condition of this coil. It's uh, it leaks. So we're going to uh, add the TXV <clears throat> to this coil, remove the horizontal tray because we don't need it, and uh, put the equalization tube here. Just like the other one. Simple, simple. We're also going, I'm going to show you guys something else we're going to do. And also, as you can tell, this is an aluminum coil. Replacement coil. The system is in very good condition. Other than a leak and evaporator coil, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this unit. Now, <coughs> there is no piston in there. Now, you take like your Goodmans and your Reams and the other brands, they use a bigger fitting here with a uh, Teflon seal. Train and American Standard do not do that. They don't use a Teflon seal. It's, it's pretty much brass to brass or brass to aluminum like we have here. So we're going to use Nylog. Get it pushed down. And it doesn't take much. And then, you know, you just get that on there like that. I'll tighten that up in a minute because what I need to do is put the other piece on. And make my adjustment because my liquid, you know, it only comes with this. Obviously that's not going to be enough. 
So I take my old piece here and I'll do the same thing. I'll nylog it and I've got to get it to line up right in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust all this, all these cap tubes. We're going to pull them and I'm going to do the same thing and apply some nylog. I guess I should go with the threads. There we go. I'll snug this up with wrenches here in a minute. And that's just about where I want it. I can always, yep, bend that out. Okay, that's where I want it. So now what we'll do is... Put a back up down here on the aluminum. And we're going to snug up this valve. Now you don't want to go, you know, and bow up on this thing. You know, you got that nylog on there. A good, good snug will do, but you don't want to be bowing up on this. You know, like it's like it's a damn like you're a car mechanic or anything. Just see, I'm there. I'm just gonna kind of. You don't want it to leak, but you don't want to force it. I feel like I could go a little bit more. Okay, and that's it. I'm gonna stop right there. Cause you don't like I said, you don't want to bow up on it. I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to put a backup on the bottom of the valve. Now, this is brass to brass here. So, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to, it's already pretty snug, but we don't want to. So, I'm pushing on this one and pulling on the top one. And that's it. I don't want to bow up on that. I promise you, it will not leak. <clears throat> now, there may be a Schrader stem in here. There is not, okay, and which is good. We don't want one. I'm also going to nylog the equalization tube. You don't have to use a lot of this stuff. It doesn't take much, fellas. This one here, I don't really need to hold the back up. I mean, I can, it won't hurt to, but I'm just gonna barely snug it. Still turning real easy, real free, very easy, not forcing it, barely putting any pressure on it. Still got a little ways to go. We're barely putting any pressure. Barely putting any pressure. You'll feel it once you get to the end. Okay, we're getting to the end now. So we're gonna take it real easy. We're gonna go slow. And that's it. It will not leak. <clears throat> and the last step is the sensing bulb. Now you want your, when you're mounting in a, you know, when you're mounting like in a horizontal position, it doesn't matter. But when you're mounting in vertical, you want your pigtail to be facing upward so it doesn't fill up with liquid. There we go. 
and you want it something like that and then we'll tape it up and that'll be good all right gentlemen so i forgot to prop the camera up but we've got the new coil in as you can see we've got it brazed in train don't give you much room on that factory plus this is inch and an eighth anyway this one was okay so i just re-welded that and uh but they don't give you i mean that's the factory right there they don't give you no room with this deep cover so i added on a piece of seven eighths and then just shoved the seven eighths inside the inch and an eighth and brazed it shut new txv's on we got our new aluminum coil they're using a uh there's a name for this uh it's like a fern co or some shit it's a plumbing fitting but it'll work it'll work fine all i gotta do is uh tighten that up into the drill flip the tip this one this one's already tight i just gotta snug that one up and the drain will be ready to go so we'll just very carefully perfect nice and snug all right now we're going to go outside and uh we are going to remove a suction line filter dryer and install a new liquid line filter dryer but we're going to leave that off just like that for right now and then uh we're going to go do those two things outside and then start a vacuum all right so we cut out this suction dryer here and i didn't have any inch and an eighth so i replaced it with a piece of seven eighths you can debate that and call me a hack or a shit tech or a piece of shit for doing that but i that's all i had to work with and i don't really think this needs an inch and an eighth line set anyway but that's what it's got it's an r22 train straight cool but the air handler is sitting right there behind that wall so it's a very short line set. I think an inch and an eighth line set was very unnecessary. So I replaced it with a piece of seven eighths. Uh, I think that'll be fine. We got a new filter dryer in. I even picked up a dryer from the train store. You can see by the service first OEM. That is a train dryer made by Dan Foss. If you look right there. But anyway so uh we're gonna do a pressure test yeah and yes i will rewrap all that in insulation don't worry and uh we're gonna do a pressure test right now make sure there's no leaks then we'll start the vacuum all righty we got everything buttoned back up looks like we were never here really good i really like these train air handlers these are the tecs this is a 2TEC, which means it's R22 from 2008. But, uh, looks good. Everything went back together perfect. Can't even really tell we were here. Alrighty, guys. Our machine is operational. Nice and quiet. Just been running about... A minute so our target self cooling is 10 we're already around 6 but we're gonna let this thing run a good 10-15 minutes before we make any final decisions all right we've been running about 15 minutes and we're right at about that 7 I may put a little squirt in it I'm going to put just a little squirt in there, bring that subcooling up a little closer to 10 and bring that superheat down a little bit. Yeah. 